The Matrix is an American media franchise consisting of four feature films, beginning with The Matrix and continuing with three sequels, The Matrix Reloaded, The Matrix Revolutions, and The Matrix Resurrections. The first three films were written and directed by the Wachowskis and produced by Joel Silver. The screenplay for the fourth film was written by David Mitchell and Alexander Heman, was directed by Lana Wachowski, and was produced by Grant Hill, James McTeague, and Lana Wachowski. The franchise is owned by Warner Brothers, which distributed the films along with Village Road Show Pictures. The latter, along with Silver Pictures, are the two production companies that worked on the first three films. The series features a cyberpunk story of the technological fall of humanity, in which the creation of artificial intelligence led the way to a race of self-aware machines that imprisoned mankind in a virtual reality system the Matrix to be farmed as a power source. Occasionally, some of the prisoners manage to break free from the system and, considered a threat, become pursued by the artificial intelligence both inside and outside of it. The films focus on the plight of Neo, Trinity, and Morpheus trying to free humanity from the system while pursued by its guardians, such as Agent Smith. The story incorporates references to numerous philosophical, religious, or spiritual ideas, among others the dilemma of choice versus control, the brain in a vat thought experiment, messianism, and the concepts of interdependency and love. Influences include the principles of mythology, anime, and Hong Kong action films. The film series is notable for its use of heavily choreographed action sequences and bullet-time slow-motion effects, which revolutionized action films to come. The characters and setting of the films are further explored in other media set in the same fictional universe, including animation, comics, and video games. The comic bits and pieces of information and the Animatrix short film The Second Renaissance act as prequels to the films explaining how the franchise's setting came to be. The video game Enter the Matrix connects the story of the Animatrix short Final Flight of the Osiris with the events of Reloaded, while the online video game The Matrix Online was a direct sequel to Revolutions. These were typically written, commissioned, or approved by the Wachowskis. The first film was an important critical and commercial success, winning four Academy Awards, introducing popular culture symbols such as the red pill and blue pill, and influencing action filmmaking. For those reasons, it has been added to the National Film Registry for Preservation. Its first sequel was also a commercial success, becoming the highest-grossing R-rated film in history, until it was surpassed by Deadpool in 2016. As of 2006, the franchise has generated 3 billion US dollar in revenue. A fourth film, The Matrix Resurrections, was released on December 22, 2021, with Lana Wachowski producing, CO writing and directing and Reeves and Moss reprising their roles. Plot Picking up immediately where Reloaded ended, Neo and Bane still lie unconscious in the medical bay of the ship Hammer. Inside The Matrix, Neo is trapped in a subway station named Mobile Ave, a transition zone between the Matrix and the machine world. He meets a family of programs, including a girl named Sadie. The father tells Neo the subway is controlled by the trainman, a program loyal to the Merovingian. When Neo tries to board a train with the family, the trainman refuses and overpowers him. Seraph contacts Morpheus and Trinity on behalf of the Oracle, who informs them of Neo's confinement. Seraph, Morpheus, and Trinity enter Club Hell, where they confront the Merovingian and force him to release Neo. Troubled by visions of the Machine City, Neo visits the Oracle, who reveals that Smith intends to destroy both the Matrix and the real world. She tells him that everything that has a beginning has an end. After Neo leaves, a large group of smiths assimilates Sadie and Seraph. The Oracle does not resist assimilation and Smith gains her powers of precognition. In the real world, the crews of the Nebuchadnezzar and the Hammer find and reactivate Niobe's ship, the Logos. 
They interrogate Bane, who says that he has no recollection of the earlier massacre. As the captains plan their defense of Zion, Neo requests a ship to travel to the Machine City. Motivated by her encounter with the Oracle, Niobe offers him the Logos. Neo departs, accompanied by Trinity. Bane, who has stowed away on the Logos, takes Trinity hostage. Neo realizes that Bane has been assimilated by Smith and a fight ensues. Bane burns Neo's eyes with a power cable, blinding him. Neo discovers that he can still see machine source code in the real world and uses this ability to kill Bane. Trinity pilots them to the machine city. Niobe and Morpheus rush toward Zion in the hammer to aid the human defenses. Zion's shipyard is overwhelmed by a horde of sentinels, and the fatally wounded Captain Mifune instructs Kid to open the gate for the hammer, which he does with the aid of Z. When it arrives, it discharges its EMP, disabling all the sentinels present but also Zion's remaining defenses. The humans are forced to retreat and wait for the next attack, thinking it will be their last stand. The Logos is attacked by a wave of machines outside of the Machine City. To avoid the onslaught, they fly above them to open sky, and then crash into a building, fatally wounding Trinity. Neo enters the Machine City and encounters the leadership of the machines in the form of the Deus Ex Machina. Neo warns that Smith plans to conquer both the Matrix and the real world and offers to stop Smith in exchange for peace with Zion. The Deus Ex Machina agrees, and the Sentinels shut down, stopping the attack on Zion. The machines plug Neo into the Matrix, whose population has now been entirely assimilated by Smith. The Smith with the Oracle's power steps forth, telling Neo that he has foreseen his victory against Neo. After a protracted fight, Neo appears to concede defeat and allows himself to be assimilated. Outside the Matrix, the machines send a surge of energy into Neo's body, which inside the Matrix causes the Neo Smith clone, then all the other Smith clones to be destroyed, leaving the Oracle lying there, and causing Neo's life to be sacrificed. The Sentinels withdraw from Zion, Morpheus, and Niobe embrace, and Neo's body is carried away by the machines. The Matrix is rebooted, and the Architect meets the Oracle in a park. They agree that the peace will last as long as it can and that those humans who desire it will be offered the opportunity to leave the Matrix. The Oracle tells Sadie that she thinks they will see Neo again. Seraph asks the Oracle if she knew this would happen. She replies that she did not know, but she believed. Cast Production the film's budget was estimated between 110 million US dollars and 150 dollars million. Filming occurred concurrently with its predecessor, The Matrix Reloaded, and live action sequences for the video game Enter the Matrix. This took place primarily at Fox Studios in Sydney, Australia. Most notably, the subway scenes were filmed at the disused tunnels of St. James Railway Station and the end sequence with the Oracle and the Architect was filmed in the Royal Botanic Garden. Carrie-Anne Moss injured her ankle during the shooting in Australia. Soundtrack In contrast to its predecessors, very few source tracks are used in the film. Aside from Don Davis' score, again collaborating with Juno Reactor, only one external track is used. Although Davis rarely focuses on strong melodies, familiar light motifs from earlier in the series reappear. For example, Neo and Trinity's love theme which briefly surfaces in the two preceding films is finally fully expanded into Trinity definitely, the theme from the Zion docks in Reloaded returns as Men in Metal, and the energetic drumming from the Reloaded Tea House fight between Neo and Seraph opens Tetsujin as Seraph, Trinity and Morpheus fight off Club Hell's three doormen. The climactic battle theme, named Neodamarung, features a choir singing extracts from the Pavamana Mantra, introduced in the Upanishads. The chorus can be roughly translated from Sanskrit as follows, Lead us from untruth to truth, lead us from darkness to light, lead us from death to immortality, P. 
peace peace peace. The extracts were brought to Davis by the Wachowskis when he informed them that it would be wasteful for such a large choir to be singing simple U.S. and A.S. These extracts return in the film's denouement, and in Navras, the track that plays over the closing credits. Release The Matrix Revolutions was released in theaters roughly three weeks after The Matrix Reloaded arrived on DVD, October 14. 2003. The film had the widest release ever, opening simultaneously in 108 territories at 1,400 Greenwich Mean Time on November 5, 2003. Reception Box Office On opening day, The Matrix Revolution scored $24.3 million, becoming the third highest Wednesday opening, behind The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, and Star Wars. Episode 1 The Phantom Menace During its three-day opening weekend, it would earn $48.5 million. In its first five days of release, the film grossed $83.8 .8 million in the United States and Canada from 3,502 theaters, but dropped 66% during the second week. It had the highest five-day Wednesday opening for any Warner Brothers film until it was taken by Superman Returns in 2006. The film would even compete against the newly released family films Brother Bear and Elf. Internationally, the film grossed $119 million in its first five days from 10,013 prints in 107 territories with the third biggest opening ever in Japan and Spain and the fourth biggest in the United Kingdom, Italy, and Mexico. Combined, it grossed $203 million in its first five days. This made it the highest worldwide opening weekend for any film, holding the record until it was beaten by The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King a month later. The Matrix Revolutions would also achieve the record for having the biggest international opening weekend for an R-rated film until 2015 when it was surpassed by Fifty Shades of Grey. The film grossed over $139 million in North America and approximately $427 million worldwide, roughly half of the Matrix Reloaded box office total. Home Media the Matrix Revolutions was released on DVD and VHS on April 6, 2004. The film grossed $116 million in DVD sales. Additionally, it was released on 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray on October 30, 2018. Critical Response On review aggregation website Rotten Tomatoes, the Matrix Revolutions holds an approval rating of 35% based on 218 reviews, with an average rating of 5.30-10. The site's critical consensus reads, A disappointing conclusion to the Matrix trilogy as characters and ideas take a backseat to the special effects. On Metacritic, the film has a weighted average score of 47 out of 100 based on 41 reviews, indicating mixed or average reviews. Audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B on an A and to F scale, a grade down from the B plus earned by the previous film and two grades down from the A earned by the first film, therefore the second lowest grade earned by a film in the series. Some critics criticized the film for being anticlimactic. Additionally, some critics regard the film as less philosophically ambiguous than its predecessor, The Matrix Reloaded. Critics had difficulty finding closure pertaining to events from The Matrix Reloaded, and were generally dissatisfied. Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun Times gave the film three stars out of four, despite offering criticisms of his own, on the grounds that it at least provided closure to the story well enough so that fans following the series would prefer seeing it as to not. Sequel While making the Matrix films, the Wachowskis told their close collaborators that at that time they had no intention of making another installment after the Matrix Revolutions. Instead, they gave their blessing to the notion of gamers inherit the storyline, and the Matrix Online video game was built as the official continuation. In February 2015, in interviews promoting Jupiter Ascending, 
Lily Wachowski called a return to the Matrix a particularly repelling idea in these times, noting the studio's tendency to greenlight sequels, reboots, and adaptations over original material, while Lana Wachowski, addressing rumors about a potential reboot, said that they had not heard anything but she believed that the studio might be looking to replace them. At various times, Keanu Reeves and Hugo Weaving have stated that they would be willing to reprise their roles in potential Matrix films, but only if the Wachowskis were involved. In March 2017, The Hollywood Reporter wrote that Warner Brothers was in early stages of developing a relaunch of the franchise, with Zach Penn in talks to write a treatment, an interest in getting Michael B. Jordan attached to Star. According to the article neither the Wachowskis nor Joel Silver were involved at that stage, although the studio would like to get at minimum the blessing of the Wachowskis. Warner Brothers officially announced the development on a fourth film in August 2019, with Lana Wachowski serving as director and producer on it. Lana wrote the screenplay with David Mitchell and Alexander Heman. Grant Hill produced it alongside Lana. The production is a joint venture between Warner Brothers Pictures and Village Road Show Pictures, similar to the original films. Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss reprise their roles from the previous films, Lawrence Fishburne and Hugo Weaving do not appear in the film. Production began in February 2020 in San Francisco, briefly halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic and wrapped in November of that same year. The film, The Matrix Resurrections, had its world premiere in Toronto, Canada, on December 16, 2021, and was released to theaters and streaming services on December 22, 2021.